I want to take just a few moments for Sister Johnson and me to testify to you about something that happened to me through the name of this wonderful transforming Jesus. Some of you have heard us tell it. It's a true 21st century story. My wife, let, let me say this informatively and not sinfully, proudly. But my wife is going to help me with the story. She's the re a retired director of nurses of St. Louis University Hospital. So when she talks and says some things to you, I would like you to just understand she has some background in the medical field and that's purely why I'm telling you. But we're telling the story to the glory of this matchless transforming Jesus. Seven months ago, something happened to my left foot. And a knot swelled up on it. The pain got very severe. I would describe its severity like multiplied toothaches. It was just a very uncomfortable thing. One day it came to my mind, near the day of Pentecost, when Bishop Scott, under God of, of our diocese, Bishop Alfonso Scott, pastor of Stone Church, had called for a meeting at our church, Bethesda Temple in St. Louis, to make plans to celebrate the day of Pentecost. God put it in my mind. Don't let Bishop Scott get away from that church without having him pray for you. And I asked Bishop Scott to come into my office and Bishop Scott prayed for me. The pain got so severe till early one Monday morning I decided to go to St. Louis Hospital there in St. In St. Louis area and have it looked into to see what was going on in my left foot. Having introduced the testimony, now I'd like my dear wife to pick up. Come take this one. Oh, you got one? Okay. Pull the microphone. We went to the emergency room and had an x-ray. And the x-ray came back, the emergency room doctor came in and said, there's something in your foot, but we can't really tell what it is, so we're going to send you for an MRI. Well, he had two, one with contrast, one without. And when that report came back and the radi radiologist had conferred with the ER doctor, he came and told us Bishop had a tumor in his foot. 
and he had called his primary physician and they had agreed upon a specialist that he was to go to right away. And he said the tumor had grown so that it had wrapped itself around his foot into the bone. And now this is on the outside of his foot. Orthopedic surgeon. We went to an orthopedic surgeon, the specialist, and I don't know if there's such a thing as an oncologist specialist who's an orthopedic surgeon, because that's how he talked. We went to the specialist, and the doctor talked in terms of cancer the entire time we were there. All of his words were, we've got to see what the staging is. Uh, when he told Bishop about this tumor and how it had wrapped itself around his foot, he told him we could do nothing, and I'm thinking he was considering his age, or they could go as far as amputating his whole foot. Right. But he told us that he had to, he could not do a needle biopsy because it was not a liquid, it was a solid, it was a tumor and that he needed to do an incisional biopsy and try to get the thing complete as much out as he could and get the staging so that we could determine treatment. And then he told us after that we would have to go back for tests to find a primary site because this cancer probably did not start in the foot. So the whole time he's planning to treat malignant cancer. He's talking about staging, the treatment, amputation. And I'm thinking the blood of Jesus. You know, I, you know I'm sitting there thinking, oh no. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was going along. He was explaining it to me. And I said, well, no, you don't have to explain to me the stages. I, I understand. We left with the intent of having surgery scheduled. And this was going into the Memorial Day weekend. The doctor was supposed to call us that Thursday to schedule it, and we didn't hear from him. And we did not hear from him on Friday. Monday was a holiday, and we hadn't heard on Tuesday. And by then, Bishop's pain was really quite severe. Yes. The ER physician had prescribed a pain medicine prescription for him, but it just was not holding him. We finally reached the doctor on Tuesday and found out he had been on holiday and was behind, and so they'd have to call us back at the end of the week. Well, by Wednesday, Bishop wanted to be admitted to the hospital because he, he just couldn't bear it, but I told him no. Right. I, I explained that you don't go to hospitals, you don't want to sit in there and wait for surgery, You'll, you know, hospitals aren't really your friends, that's not a place you want to go, there's just too much, you could get an infection, you could fall, I just went through all that. No way, no hospital. But he had me call his, I'm looking at you because you, <laughs> he had me call his primary physician because he just couldn't bear the pain and he wanted to be admitted. So we called her and she said this to me. She said, Mrs. Johnson, I saw the reports and Bishop Johnson has every reason to be in pain. And she said, they may have to amputate his foot. She increased his medication and told me to give it to him around the clock, on schedule, and if he had breakthrough pain, to give him ibuprofen or something. I became a little more concerned at that point when she gave that report, but we began to do what we know to do as saints, right. calling on the name of the, the name. Lord. That name. That name. That name. That name, yes. God has glorified his son, given him a name above every name. But Johnson. And the saints began to pray, and Bishop Scott told him it was going to come out all right, and, and I, that gave me comfort because I knew God had the last word. Saints came out, laid hands on him. We began to pray. pray. I began to put blessed oil on his foot because he would have me look at that foot every day after the prayer went forward. I just believed God was going to do something. Yes. And I kept telling Bishop, I, I don't know what's happening, 
but I know the Lord is doing something. Right. I can't see anything right. different, but I know God is doing something. Yeah. And really, to be honest with you, I felt foolish because it didn't look different, but in my mind, in my mind, I could see this thing because in the doctor's office, I saw this white thing that looked like it had tentacles, yes. roots, when it looked like it was going up towards Bishop's ankle, and he began having pain in, in his my ankle. ankle. Especially when I moved. And I could just, in my mind's eye, envision this thing growing. But after the word, the, the prayer in the name of the Lord began going forth, in my mind's eye, I saw that thing sh shrinking back. And I told Bishop one day, when they get in your foot, this little white ball's gonna fall out and they're gonna say, what was that? <laughs> but Take your time, man. <laughs> every day I would get up, check the thing, and I would pray just like everybody else. I believe in prayer. Put blessed oil on it, and I would say to him, I don't see anything different, but I know the Lord is doing, doing something. doing something, that she tell me. And I told him, I don't know if he's going to do it as surgery, if it's happening now, but God is doing something. The day before surgery, he said, "Hun, get up and look at my foot. So I thought he was in pain. I got up and I looked. And I kind of did a double take, but it was kind of dark in the bedroom. So I opened up all the blinds, turned on all the lights, and I looked again. That thing was smaller. And not only was it smaller, it moved when I touched it. Now, this was a hard, solid thing that had been there. But when I touched it, it moved. The skin moved. That had not been happening. We went to the hospital for the surgery. Saints came and we prayed in the name of Jesus. In the name. Just before he left. A couple of hours later, the doctor called the waiting room where his daughter and I were waiting with a couple of the saints. And he said, Mrs. Johnson, he knew I was concerned about Bishop going under general anesthesia at his age, which I was more concerned about initially. And he said, the surgery went fine and he's fine. He's in recovery relief number one. And then he said this, Mrs. Johnson, I could not find the tumor. <laughs> Couldn't find it. It's that name. It's that name. It's that name, saints. He who was transformed, transformed. All right, this is not the end of the story. You can sit down if you want to. There's more to it. There's more to it. It gets more wonderful as we go. So I said, well, doctor, what, what did you find? He said, well, it was this liquid stuff. Boy, there had been no liquid before. Solid. I said, well, whatever it was, did you get it? He said, well, you know, liquid's hard to get, but I did the best I could. He said, I, I think it might have been gout. Well, I started laughing because I told Bishop he's the only person I know who had to go to surgery to find out he had gout, but we knew, <laughs> you know, that that thing did not start out as gout. And it was on the outside of his foot doctor came to visit him in the room the next day and Bishop said well and he was just kind of in a hurry and so Bishop asked him was there anything he wanted to say and he just was trying so hard to get out of the room so I said Dr. Rouse it's okay Jesus duped you he just got there before you did <laughs> So he put Bishop's foot in this big cast, and 12 days later, we went to have it removed. And when we went to have it removed, 
the doctor essentially released him. He said, you right. don't have to come back. Oh. He didn't mention, oh, the biopsy had come back, no cancer. Right. Of course, we knew that. No cancer. He said, I, I guess it was gout. So he was dismissing us and telling Bishop, you know, if you ever have problems with the surgical site, you can call. Or, you, you know, but I'm releasing you to your regular do doctor. So right. Bishop said, well, how do you explain the MRI? Now, you all in the medical field know MRIs don't lie. You don't hear people saying, I got to have a repeat one because they really couldn't. And an MRI can tell the difference between a liquid and a solid. I'm looking at the good doctor. He's validating for me. He asked the, the doctor, how do you explain that? The doctor said, um, um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he said, but isn't this report better? Isn't this news better than right, if it right. had been cancer? And really the man just dismissed us. And we had already made up our minds we were not going to mess with him too much because we knew what God had done. Yeah, yeah. So we went home and talked to the primary. I saw right. the MRI report. And you, 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 this was, she told him this was a miracle. Then he put me on the phone and she told me that she believed in prayer, that she had been practicing medicine many years and had seen many miracles. And, and then that's when she told me, I saw the report and we know what we saw. Yes. And you tell Reverend Johnson, she said, that he can tell his congregation this one was a miracle. Thank you. Yes, give God the glory. That's that name. It's the name. God has glorified his son Jesus. That name is above every name. God bless you. Everybody standing. What a powerful word and testimony. The transformed has become a transformer. <laughs>